Do you still write spec screenplays today? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I did break in in 1987 writing a spec script called K-9. It uh, sold to Universal and then became a movie starring James Belushi. It was released in 1989 and then there were two sequels. And off that, I had a 15-year period where I lived in Los Angeles and wrote 30 plot projects for every major studio and every uh, broadcast network except for ABC, which is why I joke is why I don't watch ABC now, you know. But um, nowadays, I teach at the DePaul University School of Cinematic Arts in Chicago full time. I've evolved into that. And so I don't write as much in terms of screenplays right now. I do have one project I'm working on with a producer because I'm an academic now. I mean, I've finally fully entered into this academic world. So I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book on screenwriting and that's my major area of focus. But I do have a novel that I want to write and I have another screenplay that I have waiting, you know, when I have a chance to write it. You know. Do you think there's an energy to where you write? Like when you were in Los Angeles for 15 or so years and then going to Illinois and then I don't know if you've or written in Virginia or wherever. Is there, is there a difference where you write, like what you produce? Um, when I was here, I had a, uh, a little formula that I would use. It was one to five or five to seven, which meant that I wrote from one to five in the afternoon. And when I was pounding out a first draft, it would be five to seven pages. So if I hit five pages by say 3.30, I'd say, okay, I'm done. Because I found that that's basically as much as I could do apart from say like going away for a weekend and just jamming out 60 pages, which I've done too. And it didn't really matter where I would write. It just had to be quiet. I'm not one of those people that can go to coffee shops. Uh, I, I'd like to have even I'll put white noise on sometimes to avoid you know outside interruptions. But now I do most of my creative writing late at night, like one o'clock in the morning, because that's when <laughs> everything stops, you know, in terms of emails and whatnot. But I do think it's critically important that for a writer to have a space and a time, preferably a daily routine. I just think that, you know, I've interviewed oh, probably 200 writers on my blog go into the story. And that's one consistent thing you hear is writing every day. So um, while I'm not writing spec scripts actively right now, I still do write and I am writing this book. So I write. You know, I write the book during the day and then I'll rewrite it at night. Do you think your discipline comes from having been around the air, you know, you, you, were, you were around sort of this very regimented uh, sort of environment? That's, that's a big part of it. You know, growing up a military, uh, in a military family, there was a very strong routine and my father had high expectations for us. And um, that has both good sides and negative sides to it. Also, I grew up with a very strong Protestant work ethic. You know, I like to work, I really do. And, but then the third thing is the creative, it's the passion. I mean, I love story, I love movies. One thing being a military brat, when you move around as much as I did, one of the constants was movie theaters. You, the weather could change from Alabama to California to Ohio to North Dakota the the general sort of topography and what you could do outside and when you could do it depending upon the weather that could vary but every air force base had a movie theater and it was subsidized by the federal government so like when i was a child i was literally going to see movies for 50 cents 75 cents and i would go in the summer like every day and watch movies and so i developed an enormous passion for movies i i i, I love movies i don't think there's any greater form of entertainment and storytelling than movies. And so, yeah, there is a certain amount of routine and there's a certain amount of just liking to get work done and setting goals and meeting those goals. But the most important thing is that passion, just to really lean into that and embrace it. And so that's why it's so important to pick projects that you're passionate about. Has anyone ever challenged you on that and said, you know what, Scott, you can take a week off and try to say like, don't work so hard, but you feel like that's going to throw you off your rhythm? No, I, I, I have a, you know, I, because of my blog, I've been doing it now for almost 11 years. 
I tend to interface with, and teaching, I tend to interface with people and come up with these little sayings, you know? And one of them is, there's no one right way to write. Every writer is different. Every story is different. And so anybody who says this is the way to write, you know, I would push back on that. And so, for example, one of the questions I'll sometimes ask writers when I interview them is, what's your best excuse not to write, right? It's very funny to hear them, you know, well, ESPN or the, the, <laughs> the great baking show or whatever that thing is in, you know, from England or whatnot. But I remember interviewing a writer who said to me, I don't need an excuse. If I want to take a day off, I take a day off because I know I'm going to get the project done on time. And so um, there have been times when I, when I do that. Yeah, I can take some time off, you know. But again, I'm confident I'm going to get it done because I've done so many, you know, scripts in the, uh, and gotten them, you know, from faded to fade out.